think the DJI Pocket 3 is a phenomenal camera, but I've never tested out the photo modes on this camera, and it got me thinking, are they any good? Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Zach. I'm a photographer and videographer, but more importantly than that, I am a husband and a father. And the DJI Pocket 3 has been my go-to family video camera since it came out. But recently, I had a couple people ask me, how are the photos on this camera? And I was not able to tell them anything because I've never used the photo mode on this camera until now. And now I do know what to say. So let me start by saying, as a disclaimer, this is a video camera. This is not a photo camera. So the images that you're gonna get out of this camera are not going to be professional level. While the video is more towards that professional side, like I still don't think it competes with some, you know, DSLRs or like my cinema camera, but well beyond the photos. And at the same time, second disclaimer, I personally know that this camera will not re be replacing my everyday carry camera. I'm the kind of person who carries both an everyday carry video camera and an everyday carry photo camera. This will not be taking the place of the Fujifilm. That's just not gonna happen. But what I did wanna find out was, are the photos on here good enough to actually use this as you know my photos instead of the iPhone. Because there are times where I just need to take a quick photo on my phone, I don't have the Fujifilm or I don't wanna pull it out. So I guess the question becomes, can this take the place of my phone? And for maybe you out there, can it take the place of your phone when it comes to photos? So just to start with some specs, DJI Pocket 3 has two camera modes, one being just normal photos and one being panoramic photos. You're gonna get about a nine megapixel image out of this, which if you compare it to the iPhone, I've got the iPhone 13 Pro, and that's got, I think about a 12 megapixel image. So it's not that far off. Um, I believe some of the higher end, you know, like the 15s have more megapixels. Um, I don't have that. Um, this has a focal length of about 20 millimeters. So it is a very wide focal length and it has an aperture of 2.0 and it's a set aperture. So what that means is you're gonna get an image where most everything is going to be in focus because of that wide shot, that wide focal length, and because of the uh, aperture, you're just gonna get a very in focus image. Whereas on the iPhone, um, same thing is true if you're just using the normal you know, photo mode, but if you go into like portrait, you get that uh, bokeh mode, which is just kind of fake but whatever, you get you know a little bit of that blurred out background. You don't really get this with the Pocket 3. So just you know, set expectations straight. That's kind of what you're gonna get out of this camera. Um, I decided to take this with me when we went to the zoo this week, and instead of shooting video, I wanted to shoot photos with it and just see how well does it do as a photo camera. Is it something that I would recommend people use instead of their iPhone? So here's what I learned. So the first thing I found is that Image quality is, well, to be expected for what this is. It's not the best image quality out there, but it's also not the worst. It does the job that I think you'd be using this camera for. Again, this is not a photo camera, this is a video camera. I think the times that you would use this for photos is you already have this out to take video and you just wanna quickly switch over and take a quick photo in that moment. You don't wanna hassle with pulling out you know, your phone. Um, and it's not necessarily gonna be like a photo that you're gonna post on social media. It's just gonna be a photo that captures a moment that you can remember later. So it doesn't have to be you know, the best image quality or the best photo. It's just capturing that moment. So I think that is, when I think of photos on this camera, that's kind of what I'm thinking about. Um, so the image quality, it's okay for what it is. Could be better, could be worse. Um, what I found though, that there was two big things about this that I just really struggled with. And the first was the aspect ratio. So when you're shooting photos, um, I initially started to take photos in the landscape mode, just like this. And 
I found that I really didn't like it. Like as I was looking at the photos on the screen, they just didn't look good to me. The aspect ratio looked weird to me. Um, and that's because it's it's being shot in 16.9. Now you have two choices here. You can shoot in 16.9 or one by one. When you shoot in vertical, you can shoot by nine by 16 or again, one by one. And I just defaulted to the nine by 16 or the 16 by nine, depending upon which mode I was in. Um, and I felt that that just looked weird. You know, in the landscape mode, it looked like a video clip. Um, in the portrait mode, it looked like a photo I'd post on Instagram stories. And while that's not bad, it just felt like stuff was missing. Like it just didn't feel like the right aspect ratio to me. Um, and so if I wanted to get more to work with, I could put it in one by one. Then you get a square image. Um, it doesn't cut out as much on the sides or on the top, depending upon if you're in horizontal or vertical mode. Um, but the problem I found with that is if I'm using this as a photo camera, I'm not intending to do a lot of editing on here. I'm just wanting to, you know, take it from the camera to my phone, to my library. But I felt like that would really bug me, that aspect ratio, whether it's in the nine by 16 or 16 by nine or the one by one. And so I'd have to go in and like crop it. And I just, I don't know, that bugs me. I don't really want to do that. It makes it not easy. Whereas on the iPhone, you've got a ton of different options as to what aspect ratio you want to put it in. So I think one point for the iPhone in that sense. The next thing that I found is that uh, what I think is actually really cool and kind of impressive is that you can shoot raw photos on this camera. Um, and if, if you're not someone who knows a lot, of, a lot about photos, basically a raw image um, just gives you more ability to work with certain things like the color or the exposure. You've got more flexibility when it comes to editing. If you're someone who is just gonna take a photo and you don't necessarily care how it looks, you're just looking at a basic JPEG image. If you're someone who wants to, you know, edit it a little bit, change the color up, stuff like that, you're gonna want a raw image. And so it is impressive that this camera can shoot in raw. But again, I think I go back to the fact that I don't really want that. Like, I'm not wanting to take photos on this camera that I wanna edit because I, one, I know the image quality just isn't there to actually like edit and get it the way I want it to look. Um, but two, like I want this to be easy. Like it's the same, I don't really edit the photos I take on my iPhone. Like I'm just looking for easy photos. Um, and so I think the raw just isn't necessary. Now I will say, I will at times shoot raw on my iPhone and edit it, but that's usually not the case. I just don't see myself editing raw photos on this because it just feels like too much of a hassle for what I'm getting out of it. Um, so it's cool that raw images you can do, but I just don't know if I'd actually use it all that much. So I don't know, I guess I'd give another point to the iPhone there because I, I know I won't ever edit these photos, but I may edit a few photos on my iPhone. So the next thing I noticed is, and this one really bothered me, this one really annoyed me, is that when you go to take a photo, you press the button and it feels like it takes forever for the image to actually be captured. I mean, in reality, it's probably only like a second, but I hate that. Like, I want the photo to be taken the moment I press the button because stuff can change in that second. I mean, I was taking photos of my toddler and she would move, she would run. And so that just really bothered me. But even more than that, the reset time to take another photo is just as long, if not longer. So if I'm like, I wanna snap a bunch of photos, I take a photo and I'm pressing the button and like, I'm not getting a photo every time I press the button. And that to me is annoying because especially when you like have a toddler like I do, you're gonna wanna take a lot of photos because you wanna pick the best one out of those. Um, on the iPhone, I know that I can do that. I know that I can press the button and it's gonna take the photo the moment I press the button. And I know that I can press it 10 times and I'm gonna get 10 images and I can do it in quick succession. Um, that's just not the case on this guy. And so I think that gives another point to the iPhone. 
Now, this does have a countdown feature on here where you can set up to seven seconds delay uh, to take an image. And I did use this once to take a photo of all three of us. Um, so I think that's a cool thing. I don't have any complaints about that. Um, I'm glad they included it because, you know, while you can definitely just, you know, have the camera and take selfies, like there are times where maybe you want to set it on a stand and you want to, you know, take a photo of just yourself. I think one thing that is cool, and I actually I kind of like this, like I could flip this around, I could tap on my face. Now it's gonna active track my face and I could press the button to take the photo, run, and it'll like track me, it'll move with me. So I think that's a cool little feature. Like the iPhone doesn't do that. Um, but yeah, that's a cool feature. So maybe what, maybe we'll, we'll give a point to the DJI on this one. Like. Yeah. Now, the final thing that I wanna mention is the other photo mode, which is panorama. Now, I was actually really excited about this because I did see some photos that people took in panorama mode. I was like, oh, okay, that kind of looks cool. So I, I was excited about this feature until I got home. So basically what I think is cool about the panoramic mode is I can turn this camera around, I can press the button, you have to hold it straight up, but it's gonna do all the work for me. It's gonna move the gimbal itself, take the quick photo. I assumed that I would have to like press the button and then pan um, like this, but it like does the work for you. Um, and I think that's cool, except for the fact that because it's taking four separate images, like again, what's in your image may change. And so like my daughter at one point starts here but then she's in the image again over here because she moved. So I, I think that's the downside, but the even bigger downside of it is that when I pulled the edited images into my computer to look at them, it didn't come out as one panoramic shot. It came out as four separate photos. Okay, I gotta pause because I'm wrong. Like I'm dumb. I was looking at the raw images and not the JPEG images, if you only look at the JPEG images, then yes, you do get a panoramic shot where it stitches it together. But what I was about to say is that you only get the four images and they're separate and you have to do the work to stick them together. That is true if you're wanting to edit them yourself, if you're wanting to go into your editing software and adjust the color and all that. If you want just the JPEG, then it does give you that image stitched together. and. Honestly, I'm kind of impressed by it. Like, I think that's the one thing that I like. I like, I do like the panorama shot. So yeah, point to the DJI. And now I'm gonna cut out everything else I was about to say because I was just harping on it and I was wrong. So yeah, I think this is a video camera, not a photo camera. I think it's very clear that for me, I would honestly pick the iPhone over the DJI Pocket 3 when it comes to photos. Photos only, not video, photos. But that's a big deal for me to say. Like if you've stuck around this channel, you've heard me harp on the iPhone. I hate the iPhone when it comes to photos and video, um, but I'll actually use it from time to time. I don't honestly ever see myself using the photo mode on this camera again. I am going to right now turn it back to video and we'll probably never again go back to photos. I just don't think it's a photo camera and that's fine. It doesn't need to be because it is an amazing, amazing video camera. Like I love this for video. I just don't think it's there for photos and that's fine because it doesn't need to be. So anyways, that's my thoughts on the photos. I've had a few people ask about it, my raw, thoughts on it there. Um, take your DJI pocket with you if you want video, take your phone or even better, take something like this with you if you want photos. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please do hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already. Um, and if you disagree with me, please let me know. Maybe I just suck at taking photos on the pocket. Maybe there are people out there who do it a lot better. So please let me know your thoughts on it. I would love to hear from you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll catch you in the next one.